Hey, what it is, what it do, what it be. Yes, it is that time once again. We are back. Welcome to the I Am The Possible podcast experience. Yes, this is still the place where possibilities become perspective. Guys, I want to welcome you into season four, the kickoff edition, the kickoff uh, episode. So glad to be back with you. So excited about the new things that I have to share, the exciting news that I have to share, the guests that I'm bringing on in this season, Um, just the evolution, just the growth and the development, all the great things that God is doing and sharing revealing, building within me and through me, and just the things that I want to share with you, the value that I want to add. I am just so grateful and so excited to be back with you guys. Guys, listen, I don't even know where to begin, okay? So I won't even try. I won't even attempt to fit everything into this one episode. That's what seasons are for, to unpack over time and to share with you guys the information that I have in and through the process of the episodes that I'll release uh, during this season. So um, maybe you've noticed if you're watching on the tube and you should be watching on the tube, you notice that we got a whole new vibe going on um, and that is on purpose, okay? I want to begin to have more conversations, conversations that create confidence in you in what's possible for your life, okay? I am learning, I am growing in my awareness, in my appreciation, and my application, right? All of my A's, right? My, my awareness, appreciation, and my application of the value and the power and the importance of conversations. And I'm gonna be sharing so much about conversations, about communication, about where I am and what I'm up to and the value that I want to add to you in this very specific area of communication. But I have learned that things change through conversations, whether they're conversations that we have with other people or the one that I specialize in, conversations that we have with ourselves. And I'm going to be sharing a little bit more about that in just a moment. But Conversations, they are truly the catalyst to creation. Even God, right? Let us create man. I mean, even, even in us getting here, arriving, right, in this, in this thing called life, right, on this planet called Earth, it was in and through a conversation that God had with himself, right? It, 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 was, the, it, was, the, it was the concepts and the ideas and the imagination, right? All working together in the mind and in the heart of God that produced mankind and produced all that we see in this thing called life. And so conversations, they are the crust <laughs> of 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 creation they are the catalyst of creation and i am so excited about diving in and helping us all um, as i grow and develop as i grow in my appreciation my awareness my application i want to share those wins with you i want to share information with you i want to make sure that you get a hold of this information as well so that you're able to apply these things to your life because communication it is the deal breaker or the deal maker. Our ability to communicate with others, to communicate with ourselves, that's it, man. I mean, life is built on relationships. And last time I checked, relationships, they are built or they are destroyed in and through our ability to effectively communicate within the context of that given relationship. That's relationships with others and the relationship that we have with ourselves. Um, And so I'm letting a lot out the bag right now. Again, in future episodes, I'm going to be unpacking these things and providing all of the information that you need so that you can continue to grow in your awareness, your appreciation for and your application of your communication skills and how it influences and how it impacts your overall quality of life. But today, guys, today. 
I want to take it back, right? Way back, right? Um, sometimes you got to take it back. And I felt in this kickoff episode, I had a bunch of ideas, a bunch of content. I'm always creating, always coming up with new ideas and new information. So, um, you know, always, always ready to share something new. But I really felt in my heart that it was appropriate to share something old, right? It was appropriate for me to kind of take us back a little bit, back to the roots, back to why I am the possible is, where it came from, how it was created, and its purposes. I believe someone needs to hear this and someone needs to understand this and it's going to add value to someone. Um, and then in the future episodes, we're going to continue to unpack and, and really work through the, the, just the wonderful things that God has revealed to me and, and the, the information that I have to share. I believe it's, it's going to um, just bless you tremendously, even as it's blessed me tremendously. So I am the possible. I am the possible was birthed out of a poor self-image. OK, at the end of the day, if you hear nothing else, I am the possible is about the innovation of your identity. OK, it is the innovation of your identity. And um, again, I'm, I'm just so excited about the things that I want to share. I'm, I'm just going to interweave and enter. Yeah, I think that's the right word. I'm going to just weave some of the new stuff that I'm going to be sharing in this season into this older story to just kind of connect some of the dots. But. At the end of the day, I am the possible is the innovation of your identity because it was birthed out of a poor self image, my own poor self image. For years, I didn't accept myself. For years, I didn't love myself. I didn't appreciate myself. I didn't like much about myself. I was very critical. I judged myself harshly. I demanded a lot of myself. Um, I talk a lot about this in my book, What is Enough? because the book was written to those who put so much pressure on themselves, um, creating these lofty goals that they, maybe they could attain, but it's so much pressure that you put on yourself because you don't feel like you're enough. So you try to win the love of others and the acceptance of others through your effort, right? And so, um, I am the possible was really born out of my own personal reflection of how I didn't really feel that I was enough, that I in and of myself was not lovable or acceptable. I wasn't good enough for my pastor. I wasn't good enough for my wife. I wasn't good enough for my children. I wasn't good enough for friends and family. I wasn't good enough for the people uh, in my neighborhood, you know, growing up, I mean, there was a lot of scars in those formative years that I think helped to shape that framework for me, that I wasn't good enough as I was. I wasn't acceptable as I was. And so I had to work extra hard to please other people, right? Becoming a, a people pleaser. And so it was birthed out of my own reflection, out of my own suffering, my own pain. But then I was able to see a picture and, and, and really have an experience through riding this, this bus. Uh, the story goes, I was, I was working in, in Pasadena, California, but my family and I, we had moved to Rancho Cucamonga. And so, uh, you know, shout out to my, <laughs> to my next Friday fans. Yes, I was out there with Day Day and them. <laughs> but but um, we, had, we had moved out to uh, Rancho Cucamonga. And so I was riding this transit bus, the 690. It would take you from Pasadena and it would drop you off in Claremont. And my wife would then pick me up from there and take me home. Or sometimes I just parked at the, uh, at the bus station, right? So I was commuting back and forth every day to work and the bus is full of businessmen and women, right? Because we're all going to, to our jobs, right? So this was me working in, in a corporate America. And so these were people that I knew, right? Based on my salary as an entry, entry level, right? Because remember my story, um, when I came into corporate America, I had no experience, no background, no nothing, okay? So I knew with the money I was making at my level, I knew these guys were making good money, okay? So it wasn't about money, but, I would notice 
that these guys just did not look or seem very happy each day when they got off work or when they were going in. Sometimes you would hear conversations, you know, just the typical kind of nitpicking or complaining about work uh, as, you, as, you, as you rode the bus. But what I was starting to observe and really notice was their eyes. And again, this is one of those surreal moments. This is just one of those, one of those moments where you see something in life and you have an idea and it just grips you. There's um, a resonating in your soul of what you're seeing and what you're witnessing. And so one day I was riding the bus as I often did and I was, I was, I was people watching as I often did. And so I was noticing their eyes. For some reason, it was as if their eyes were speaking to me. And what their eyes were saying to me was, and this is kind of what I heard in my heart, I want to like myself, but not like this. I want to like myself, but not like this. Now this, this didn't happen just, you know, one day. I had been observing for weeks, right? I had been looking at people's faces for weeks. I had been studying them, their mannerisms for weeks. I was pondering, why do people look so unhappy? Why do people look so dissatisfied, right? Because at that stage, I was still very grateful for my job. I was still very happy and excited about growth and developing in and through this career. But I was looking at them and I was wondering, man, what is going on with these people? And so one day as I was observing them, the idea comes to mind. I want to like myself. They had a desire to like themselves. They they wanted to like themselves. But then it said what I heard was, but not like this. And what resonated for me, not like this was and this is purely a revelation okay it made sense as i began to meditate in it process it reflect on it write some things out reflect on my own life study the word of god i mean it all started to make sense what once it all came together and once i processed it but i'm just sharing with you how it was birthed how it was conceived the spark of i am the possible I want to like myself. There is a desire for me to like myself, but there's a but, but not like this. And that this, like this, was communicated to my heart as the stage I'm in, my situation, my circumstances, the way I see myself. I'm, I'm judging myself. I'm, I'm being critical of myself. I'm being judgmental of myself. I'm rejecting, right? I'm practicing self-rejection. I want to like me, right? That's that internal dialogue. That's that self-talk that I'm going to be talking about in this season. I want to like myself, but not like this. And so what is the like this? Is it uh, maybe the weight that you're at physically? Was it the position on your job? Not like this, not in this position. Was it the pay that you were that you were receiving? Right. Was it a relationship that you were in? I don't know what the personal struggles were. I don't know what they were, but. I sensed that it was a, a place, a stage, a situation that I've grown to understand and appreciate is very temporary. One thing about change, it's happening constantly. OK, so we're always changing. We're never quite staying the same. And so they were not liking themselves, just as I on many levels and in many areas of life. I wasn't liking myself, but I didn't have that conversation. I wasn't aware enough of the conversation that I was having that they were having. I don't like myself like this. And it was right around that time when I was given the opportunity to deliver a message at my church. My pastor had um, scheduled some time away and I was given an, an, an opportunity to preach. And for whatever reason, right, maybe it's just the hand of God, the, the leading of the Holy Spirit, not sure you know, exactly what it was. I believe that it was divine. I, I, I believe that God was, was at work in me, that for whatever reason, I began to study butterflies. I don't know. 
right? It just <laughs> look up butterflies. To this day, I don't know what led me to it. I don't even know how it came came in my mind, right? But just start studying butterflies. Look up some butterflies. And as I began to study butterflies, I learned scientifically that a butterfly is a butterfly from birth, from the point of conception. They are a butterfly. That, that's what they are. However, socially, if you think about it, and I've, I've, I've tested this many times, right? Many, many times I've tested this. Um, I'll be preaching or teaching and I'll have someone participate. I'll bring them up on stage or, you know, I'll go out to them and I'll say, draw me a butterfly or describe a butterfly. And without fail, whenever I say that, they always draw or they always, they, they, they always uh, describe the, the flying butterfly, the free, majestic, beautiful, mosaic, right, colorful, vibrant, free butterfly hopping or flying from one flower to the next. Rarely do they ever describe or draw the previous three stages, the previous three situations. You see where I'm going with this, right? It was always this final stage called the adult butterfly that people instantly resonate with, instantly drew, instantly described. As a society, that's the, that's the pinnacle. That's, the, that, that, that's what we want to attain. That's what we know. That's what we see. But scientifically, meaning in the construction, in the development, in the creation of the butterfly, God said, you're a butterfly from the beginning. You are that which you are becoming. You are already a butterfly at the egg stage because there's four cycles. You have the egg stage. You have the caterpillar stage, right? Or the larva. You have the cocoon stage, which much, many people know it by, or the pupa stage when it's wrapped up in its cocoon. Or lastly, or, you know, and lastly, the fourth stage, which is the adult butterfly. Stage one, egg. Stage two, caterpillar. Stage three, cocoon. Stage four, adult butterfly. Those names, egg, caterpillar, pupa, or cocoon, their names, their descriptions, but the reality is it's a butterfly. Stage one, it's a butterfly. Stage two, it's a butterfly. Stage three, it's a butterfly. Stage four. In and of itself, it has always been, will always be a butterfly. And what God began to show me in that season of discovery was that our lives are much like this butterfly. We are what we have always been and will always be. We're only growing, developing, maturing, evolving, unfolding, unpacking the potential, the possibilities that is within us. I'll say that again. That a preach, <laughs> okay? We are what we've always been and will always be. We are that which we are becoming. The only thing that's happening is that through our stages or cycles of life from one situation, from one stage to another, we're simply unfolding, unpacking, evolving, growing and developing and maturing through the various levels of our potential, of our possibilities. I am the possible. I am that which I am becoming. And what it blessed me to realize and to understand and to preach and to teach and to educate us about is that we, 
as I like to say, can fly without wings. And the way that we do that is instead of waiting to the final fourth stage of life, where we want to be, where we think we should be, till everything is perfect, everything is in place, we can say, I am a butterfly at the egg stage. That egg stage represents in our personal lives when we're small, people are overlooking us. The egg is microscopic, it, you can barely see it. And sometimes in our lives, we feel like we are not being seen or heard, like we're not being validated, like we have no value. We all go through that stage of life. But yet and still, you are and it is a butterfly. Stage two, the caterpillar. You're starting to grow, you're starting to move, you're starting to move about, right? But you're sluggish, you're slow. You can't do much. You can't defend yourself very well. Don't we go through that same stage? We're starting to move a little bit. We're starting to gather some information. We're starting to do a little something over here. We're starting to do a little something over there. But mm, we're still not very confident. We're still not very competent in who we are and what we're doing and the purpose of life and why we're here. And we're still figuring some things out. So we're still on the defense. We're still kind of unprotected, unguarded, right? But yet and still, it is and we are the butterfly, the possible. That third stage, that cocoon, that pupa, when we're wrapped up in that secret place. Now we've gained some information. We've gained some experiences. We've gained some knowledge. And now we're looking to up our game. We're looking to hone in on who we are and why we're here. And God puts us in a secret place. He begins to remove some things out of our lives. He begins to prune our lives. And he begins to wrap us in, in, into his secret place. And he begins to say, now this is who you are. This is why you're here. This is what you're supposed to do. Let's get focused right maybe in that 30 year 40 year you know age range is, is is when things start to come into view we've heard enough cried enough been through enough been hurt enough disappointed enough right and now we're taking all of that experience and we're wrapping it together to create something amazing and don't we all go through that stage so does that butterfly you know what's amazing about the about the cocoon stages, scientifically it's proven that it is through that stage where the membrane, the mental piece of the butterfly, as it's wrapped up in that cocoon, it is preserved, but the entire body is liquefied. I don't know if you knew that or not, but the entire body is liquefied, but the membrane is preserved. It means that the butterfly remembers everything. It retains its memory. It retains its experiences. It retains knowledge and everything that it's gone through up until that point. And, and, and I, I even like to imagine it has vision for that which is about to happen. Because it is through that vision that I believe that it has given the tenacity and the strength to begin to fight and to begin to burst forth from that cocoon because it needs some strength. It needs some tenacity, just like you and I need some strength and some tenacity to break forth and to go for the things that we're believing God for. Right. See how this is all tying together. And so it is in that process that that membrane is preserved. And for us. The hurts and the pains and the sufferings and the disappointments, the things that we've gone through, the things that we've learned, it is preserved in that time. So we're wrapped up. And then finally we break forth and now we get to as a mature adult butterfly, a mature adult person in those final stages, which by the way, for a butterfly is a, a, about two weeks long. The average adult butterfly lives about two weeks and then it dies. So it has about two weeks where it does nothing but look to reproduce itself. All it does is reproduce, 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 going from flower to flower, laying eggs so that its lineage can continue for it knows that it, that it has a very limited amount of time. And, and, and that's where I am in, in, in my personal life. You might be there as well, but it's in that final stage, that final leg of life where we start to really hone in on why we're here and what we need to do. And we're looking to leave a legacy. We're looking to reproduce ourselves. We're, we're looking to do something that's going to last. So how does this all work? Again, they said, I don't like myself. Not like this. I want to like myself. That's my desire, but not like this. Well, when you adopt 
the idea, the concept that is, the philosophy that is, the mindset that is, I am the possible, you are able to like yourself at every stage because you know, you become aware, you become able to appreciate, my goodness, you begin to articulate the ability to articulate that whatever stage I find myself in, I am the butterfly. I am that which I am becoming. I am my possibilities. And even as our, 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 our flagship foundational philosophy goes, I and my possibilities are one and the same. Everything I hope to be in my tomorrows, I know, I am confident of, I already am today. Oh my goodness, yes, yes. If they knew that, then they would be able to say, I want to like myself and I do. <laughs> I want to like myself and I do in this stage, in the next stage, in the stage after that. Doesn't matter where I am, doesn't matter my circumstances, doesn't matter my situations. Those things will come, those things will go, those things will be like a roller coaster. Up one day, down the next. Those things, life, it changes. Life, it's unpredictable. Life is a mystery. Life is not something that we can control. But what we can control, most importantly, is our attitude. Our attitude about us. Our attitude about the way we see ourselves and the, the way that we talk to ourselves and communicate with ourselves. And that was, that's, that's what this season is all about. Learning how to communicate with yourself effectively so that you can communicate with other people effectively and that you can build and create the quality of life that you desire in and through those relationships. <laughs> Man, I'm so excited about this new season. I'm so excited to share these things with you guys. So I hope and pray that you guys hear my heart and you, you hear, you know, uh, where this thing came from and what it's, you know, what, what, what it really is, man. This is about seeing yourself. This is about innovating the identity, the image, the idea that you have of yourself. You don't have to buy into the image that the world gives you. You don't have to buy into the image that other people give you. You don't have to buy into the image that you've been holding on to of yourself for so long. That framework that perspective that was built out of pain and suffering and rejection by people who don't really know you like that, who don't really know themselves like that. I mean, when you really, really think about it, we get rejected by people who don't know themselves very well and they have the nerve to reject us. They don't know us very well, but then we actually internalize it. We actually run with it and think, yeah, they don't like me, so I don't like me. They reject me, so I'll reject me. That's a vicious cycle that is a deflating, devastating, destructive cycle that so many people are living in. And I am here to address. I am here to deal with. I am here to, 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 to do away with that idea and that concept. I'm here to offer a different way, a better way. Just as I remember those people on that bus, man, <sighs> I hope and pray that some way, maybe through my podcasting or through, you know, personal relationships, I don't know, somehow, some way, life, life is, life is, um, is beautifully mysterious that way. I hope and pray that each one of those people on that bus would come into this knowledge, would come into this information that I'm now sharing um, in and through this podcast and in and through um, my teachings and my, and my preachings. So that's it, man. That's it. I don't want to, you know, take up more time than necessary. I just wanted to remind you of why I do what I do. I wanted to remind you of why this podcast exists. I wanted to remind you of what lit my fire years ago and what continues to keep my fire burning because I know of the wins I've experienced. I know of the progress I've experienced. I know the life that I experience. I know the progress I see. I know the attitude I have. I know the joy that I experience on a daily basis. And I want more people to experience that. I want them to feel that way. I want them to see themselves that way. I want them to know this about themselves. Again, I didn't pack 
you know, unpack everything. I didn't, I, I didn't share everything. There was a lot of research, a lot of studying, a lot of cross comparisons and a lot of analogies and a lot of inner work that I had to do to get to this point where I'm confident about the butterfly cycle and, and the human cycle. There was a lot of research. There was a lot of work that was put into it, but I just wanted to give you the overview, right? I don't, you know, sometimes I would bore you with the details. You just need to know, hey man, what's the final product? What, what's, what's, what, what, what's happening? What is this thing all about? I just wanted to give you that level of understanding and that level of information. And I got the season to unpack it. All right, guys, if you're watching on the tube and, and, and you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. This really helps the algorithm. It helps me to get this word out, get this message out. Please subscribe hit the bell, right, that notification bell to make sure that you get all of the new episodes. Not only these episodes, right, for the podcast, but I'm starting a new series called Self Talks, um, Self Talk uh, Sessions. Um, it's a weekly video newsletter that I created through LinkedIn, but I'm also posting it here on YouTube as well. So you can benefit from that series as well. And then any random videos that I would create throughout the week, just to motivate and to inspire, but hit that not notification bell. Make sure that you get all of the latest, greatest uh, videos that I release on a weekly basis. Leave a comment, right? Let me know how this hit, right? Let me know what it said, what it did, how it, you know, what, what did it communicate to you? What came up for you, right? Your wins, right? Uh, just some feedback, whatever it is, right? It's all useful. And I want you to know that you have a voice here. I value your voice. I value your opinion. I value your feedback. So, you know, leave a comment. Um, also share, share with friends, family, coworkers, share with people that might benefit from this, right? If I benefit it, you benefit it. Um, share it with people that might benefit from this information, right? You know people that are not in a good space and they could use some information. They could use some inspiration to get them through their stages of life. Cause the people on the 160, they're, they're not the only people that's saying, I want to like myself, but, but not like this. I can, I can promise you that, okay? There's, there's a whole lot more of us that, that, that are saying that, um, that, that, that we might you know, be aware of, right? We're, we're saying it, but we're not aware that we're saying it. And so I'm gonna bring more and more awareness in and through this season of, you know, what are we saying to ourselves um, and how that's impacting our lives overall and things that we can do to improve that internal dialogue and communication. So again, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you watch and uh, get, get all of the videos that come out. Please leave a comment and please tell a friend, tell someone about it. If you're listening to the audio only version, you're on Spotify, you're on Google Podcasts, you're on iHeartRadio, you're, you're on Apple, you know, iTunes, whatever it is, wherever you're listening, um, I want you to do the same. You know, subscribe to, to the podcast, download it, leave a comment, leave a review, tell a friend, share it just engage, right? I want to I wanna hear from you. I want to share with you on a personal level um, as much as possible. But, you know, this, this should not be a one-way communication. I definitely want to hear back from you um, and, let's, and let's work together, all right? Lastly, in this new season, I'm going to be talking a lot more about it, um, but I am now um, coaching um, specifically men, coaching men out there who are in a space where you lack personal confidence, you lack personal competence in and through the way that you, um, you know, navigate your life, right? Many men, we struggle with just navigating our lives. Maybe you're in a relationship and you're struggling. Maybe you're on your job and you're struggling, or maybe just in general, just life in general. Uh, you just don't know how to get out of your funk. You feel stuck and you just don't know how to move forward. Um, well, brothers, I am now a certified uh, coach and I am, I, am, I am coaching and I am offering my services for anyone who might be interested. There is a link down below, uh, whether it's in the show notes of the audio version or it's here on YouTube. It's down in the description 
of this video go ahead and click that link man let's get on a discovery call today and let's help you move from wherever you are whatever stage you're in man we can help you to begin to not only like yourself but to love yourself right where you are but then take the necessary practical steps to get you where you want to go so if you're interested in connecting with me you're interested in some sort of coaching service i would love to provide that for you all right i have a passion for helping brothers live what's possible all right so click go ahead and click that link below man don't hesitate let's make it happen let's hook up let's move you forward all right that's it guys that is it it is a wrap i love you guys i'm believing in you guys okay um, I'm always thinking of you guys, all right? So um, on the website, I'm the possible. If you ever have any ideas you want to throw at me for a show, questions that you want to throw at me for a show, submit them. Let me know. I want to serve, all right? So this is about you. This ain't just about me. This ain't about me just telling you what I want to tell you. You guys throw some things my way, and I'll make sure that I would uh, create content and episodes built around the things that you want to talk about and the questions that you have. All right? That's it, man. Season four. We are back. We are on it. And until next time, this is Travel C.W. Lynch, Mr. What What, telling you today with no delay, go ahead and find a way to get out there and be your possible. Peace.